sometimes um, when a child grows up under an abusive father, it is very difficult for that child to grow up to understand a loving heavenly father. My fear is that what happens culturally with the issue of same-sex marriage is that if that becomes the law of the land, a generation from now we look back, it will be that much more difficult for a generation of young people that have grown up to look back and to recognize the relationship between Christ and the church. You see, we learn from the pages of Scripture that the battles that are being fought and waged on our watch, uh, they're, they're, they're spiritual wars first. In fact, in Ephesians chapter 6, if you just flip one chapter over from where we were, you know, we learn, for we wrestle not, in verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So the spiritual war that we're waging over these issues, over the teachings of God's word, it's a spiritual war first and foremost against principalities, against the rulers, against the powers of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. When you read those verses, when you think about that text, we're talking about angelic powers. That's a spiritual battle. That's where the battle's being fought. We're seeing it fleshed out in the world in which we live in matters of legislation, in the courts, in the halls of Albany and of Washington, of, of, of town hall meetings across America, uh, you know, around the, uh, the water coolers at the office and all those places. But the reality is, it's first and foremost a spiritual battle. Let me put it in some context here as to what it looks like. This spiritual battle that we read of in Ephesians that is being waged over what marriage means to the culture, what it means biblically, is being lived out even in Albany today. The governor convened a meeting just a little while ago in which he gathered all of the, uh, the advocates of those who, would, who were, are fighting for same-sex marriage. And they laid out a timetable believing that they can make it the law in eight to ten weeks in New York State. In eight to ten weeks. Now my job is to try to stop that from happening in eight to ten weeks. Now, because, and I say that my job not in a, an arrogant sense, but that's my, my professional capacity as a lobbyist. That's what I do. I try to block bad legislation and advance good legislation. And so that's what we're charged with. That's our task. But let me tell you something. Uh, we're facing an awful lot of foes on this. Um, and by that, I mean the last election cycle, millions of dollars were poured into campaign accounts to make this happen. Literally, there are legislators that have offered a million dollars for their vote on this issue. We can't compete with that, not only monetarily, but biblically. It's not the right way to do it. And I believe doing what God has called us to do um, is just as important to do it in the manner he's called us to do it as it is to do what he has called us to do. And so we're fighting this battle. We're fighting a battle culturally because if you look at where things are going, we're moving further and further towards acceptance of what God's word calls sin. And the more and more we move towards that, the more and more difficult it gets to stop it. We're fighting political battles because you know what? There are threats of those that will, uh, will not vote for this, will face primary challenges next year. And so elected officials are saying, I don't want to fight a primary, and so if I just go along to get along, maybe I can avoid it. We're fighting all these kinds of things. And it's good for us to be reminded that even though we see it lived out in the, in the fleshy world, in the world around us, that ultimately it's a spiritual battle. That's why I'm encouraged, because humanly speaking, I don't see how it can be stopped. But I'm not limited to having to only look at humanly speaking. We serve a God who is above all things. And if it's God's desire to be able to preserve his definition of marriage, and he's the only one with the authority to change it, then certainly he can do that. 